Hey y'all, it's Jess. Welcome back to Roots and Refuge Farm. We're in the greenhouse and today I am going to show you guys how to separate your seedlings. Uh, you may be in a position of having them sewn really close together like this. They might be a little further apart and I'm just going to show you a few different ways. Um, I've told you this before. I am not a gardening expert but I am a gardener and right now I can show you all of the seedlings that I've separated this way. Um, they're all doing just fine growing everybody's looking okay so so this is the method that I used for all of these for the most part today you're gonna see me working with tomato seedlings and they are kind of um, a little different than some of the other things you may be working with because tomato seedlings on their stems they have these little root fibers that grow all the way at the stems because tomato plants actually if left to their own devices will actually fall over and grow along the ground and shoot uh, little shoots that go up towards the sun but their main stem will grow along the ground and root the entire way um, so anytime you repot a tomato you repot it really deep because any part of the stem that you put underground grows roots you can actually do the same thing with like eggplants and peppers now their stems don't grow uh, roots quite like tomato plants do however you can repot those a little deeper especially if you have uh, seedlings that have gotten a little leggy a lot of times you can put some of that stem underground to give it a little more strength this is not just information you need as a seed starter this can actually save you a lot of money if you buy your plants already started start looking for uh, packages that have extra plants in them like if you see one of the little six cell things and it's you know 397 for six plugs if you look at a lot of times there will be two in each one and just search out for those packages that have extra plants and then go home and separate them yourself and you just got twice the amount of plants for your money same thing if you go and they've got you know three dollars for a single plug of thing if it has four plants in it you just got four times what you paid for and all you have to do is separate it out yourself typically if I'm starting seeds for my own use um, I will take a pot like this mark it with a variety and I'll put three or four seeds far enough away from each other where they can get a good start and then I can just separate them out however occasionally you'll accidentally drop two seeds close together or if you're like me this year I got a little overzealous in sowing and I sowed some of these things entirely um, entirely too thick really this was a lot of seeds I didn't expect them all to germinate and they did um, however it's okay I can separate them so I'm gonna show you how to separate when they you've got a little space and then also how to separate when you've got them really close together one of the questions I'm getting asked a lot is when like a week after they sprout two weeks whatever if they were in a position like this where I had them far enough apart I would generally separate them after they have their first set of true leaves now these are starting to get their first set of true leaves and so I feel pretty good about um, taking these apart now you can separate them when they're smaller like some of these they don't even have their tree leaves you can separate them then if you've got plants that are big like they're they're getting a lot bigger you can still do this a lot of times what you're gonna have to do is cut or break those roots and that's okay when you're dealing with tomatoes you have a ton of grace to do something like that because they do grow new roots off their stems so a lot of times if I have a pot like if you if you got a pot at the store and you've got seedlings that are this tall what I'll do is I'll, I don't have it to show you but I can tell you um, I'll just take that the whole thing out so I've got all of the soil and I'll just shake it a little bit so the soil falls away and so mostly I've got the roots with the with the thing and I just take it and just very steadily you want to hold it so you're not pulling the roots away from the plant you want to pull the roots away from each other and you might tear some but as long as that plant has a good bit of its root system there uh, you just plant it really deeply and it'll be fine so let me show you what I'm talking about with some of these my quail laid eggs today for the first time isn't that exciting here I've got a container ready to put my seedling in I typically like to mark those first or at least get the marker ready so I uh, don't lose track of it even for a minute and forget now I'm gonna just grab one of these seedlings here and what I'm doing is I'm just gonna stick my finger underneath it and grab 
the soil that's directly underneath the seedling. See, I grabbed two of them this time, so let me just pull this one away. So now I've got this seedling and I've got the soil that's underneath it, and I just scoop that out of there with my finger. I'm gonna poke a hole right down in the middle of this. And drop this in there and tighten the soil up around it. Now that one wasn't particularly leggy so I don't really need to add any soil. I was able to plant it pretty good and deep and uh, that one is good to go. But let's say we've got a package with several seeds in it and and I would say this would probably be what you would want to do if you've got more than uh, three or four seeds in a cup. You can do that finger swipe method if you've got them far enough away from each other, but I just like to do it this way. I feel like this is the easiest way to do it. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of start to loosen the soil up in here and get a space ready where I can dump this out entirely. Now let's take a look at this. As you can see, um, these seedlings, even though they're small, they've already grown some pretty deep roots. And you can imagine that they're all pretty intertwined in here. I've got them laid out now. And I'm just operating really gently with these plants. Now I'm just gonna take one of these and poke a hole all the way down into the bottom. I just put some, uh, some water on the soil not a lot it's not sopping wet but it was too dry and crumbly if your soil's super dry and crumbly whenever you go to poke a hole in it it's just going to all fall back into place so it needs to be somewhat moist or it's going to be hard to work with so i've got my hole and i'm going to take one of these and just very gently pull at it to pull it away from here see now i've got a seedling with all of those roots and i'm going to drop it down in this hole as deep as i can and start putting this soil around it. I wanna press it down so that when I do water this again, it's not going to uh, dislodge. I want this, you don't have to like compact it or anything, but you don't want it to be super loose. And if you'll see there, there it is, transplanting, transplanted seedling. Now what I typically do here, instead of doing these one at a time like that, I'll start teasing them apart and just lay them across the top. So I tease them all apart at once and then I go through, poke all my holes and put my seedlings in. Now some of these are gonna come away with a pretty good root with them. If for some reason you pull one and you accidentally pull, you know, let's say you pull most of the roots off and you've just got a little a little sprout with a tiny bit. Because tomatoes will grow new roots off their stem, this is still something that will thrive just fine. Just make sure you plant it deep. You don't wanna plant it just to the end of what you see as roots. You wanna go all the way down and drop that in there. Now I double check my stuff here to make sure there aren't any seedlings still left. And what I'll do is go ahead and scoop this soil back into a cup and I'll show you what I do with it in just a second. Keep it close. And now, I go through these and just go ahead and plant them. And I wanna tell you on the front end that you're probably gonna mutilate some seedlings whenever you first get started with this, but you get the hang of it and you learn uh, how to do it gently and effectively. If you do happen to tear a plant, like you tear too many of the roots away and you're like, I don't know if this is gonna make it, just plant it anyway and just see, you, you know, if you throw it in the trash, it's definitely not gonna make it. But if you put it in some soil and give it some water and sun and warmth and all of that, it has a heck of a lot better uh, chance there than in the trash can. So just, just try it, worst case scenario, it doesn't make it. I've actually successfully separated uh, 600 tomato plants in the last week or so and I've mutilated very few at this point. I've gotten to where I can I can do it without tearing them up. And the ones that I have transplanted, I don't have a single one failing in a cup. All right, all of my seedlings are in. I wanna show you something and this is just something I do. If you'll see here, the soil level of this cup is kinda of low. It probably just had some air pockets and I've got a good bit of stem that's exposed. This one's kinda of laying over. So what I'm gonna do is take that extra soil and just sprinkle it in here top off this soil level so that this plant has support and so more of that stem is covered there's another one here that's kind of a similar situation there's a little more room we're going to top that off 
because again, like I said, you can you can bury tomato seedlings all the way up to their leaves and, and it makes for a stronger plant. I'll show you more in depth when I plant my garden in mid-April, um, but in case you miss that video or in case you are gonna be moving your stuff out before then, when you transplant your tomatoes into your actual garden space, you apply the same thing then. If you have a big start that's 12 inches tall, what I usually do is I break off the bottom branches if you've got you know a handful of branches going and I will plant that plant as deep as I can up to the leaves if you need to you can kind of turn it sideways bend the stalk very gently so you can give it some more room if you don't have a hole that deep um, but that's again establishing a strong root system I need to put markers in these really quick so that I don't forget what I put in here okay now let's do this uh, broccoli plant so what I do here is very similar to the other thing. There's only two plants in here. So I just reach in. So I've got both seedlings. I've got the root system. And I'm just going to take this, grab the base of both plants, and very gently tease it apart. And you notice this, the soil's kind of falling away. I don't want to rip this. I don't want to pull really hard. But now I've got two seedlings with two really good root systems. Cup again. Hole down the middle. I want to get that root system all in there so it can spread out in its new new home. Now I'm not going to go super deep with this as if it were a tomato plant because these won't these won't grow extra roots up their stem. But I do want to make sure that I'm pressing this soil down because this this little guy is a little leggy. So I want to make sure that he's in there nice and firmly. New pot, happy plant. Let's go ahead and put the other one in here. As soon as you get them get them in there, you want to water them really gently. Again, I'll show you how I do it. I like to get a little bottle or something. Some people use a spray bottle, but I like to do it this way because I wanna make sure I can put enough water on this plant that it reaches down to those bottom roots because we want those roots to take hold. Um, and you can very gently pour here. And you just pour around the plant, it'll get down to the roots. These over here were um, repotted yesterday and some of them are still just a teeny bit droopy. However, these were repotted the day before, and as you can see, they are standing a lot more upright, even the little ones, and are, you know, they're reaching their leaves up. They're just a little more perky, so it does take a day or two for them to look completely normal. But these, which were repotted like a week ago, as you can see, are just taking off uh, now that they have their own space, and they're not having to compete at all for light or nutrients. And I'm just going to stick my finger down in here um, and get most of the soil out. Even these tiny little sprouts, see how, how low their roots are. But here, again, very gently, I'm just going to pull these apart. See, the roots go with it. Now I have two little guys I can put in separate containers and they'll grow better whenever they're not having to compete. The main thing, honestly, when you're doing this is to just move slow and be really gentle. Um, don't start ripping things unless you absolutely have to and which point uh, hold the plant steady if you have to start pulling uh, root systems apart they don't have to have every root in their system to survive but you want to give them as much of it as possible obviously the more roots that you allow them to keep the more established they're going to be and remember to mark everything as you go so you don't have to play the what the heck is this plant game later on i had great plans to color coordinate with these little plant markers um that didn't happen because i was going to use red for the tomatoes and and it became very quickly evident that i was going to have a need for way more red markers than anything else so i've just started mix matching them however uh, i really do like those they're in our little amazon store link down below where we suggest products that we use and like and you can go shop from that to uh support our channel it doesn't make anything cost anymore for you so we appreciate you guys doing that when you start your seeds it is okay to start them close together and then separate them and you can actually grow some things close together and they do okay however i just want to give you an example of how important it can be to separate seedlings these are kales um all of these were sown at the same time every every single one of these seeds was sown at the same time now these were sown super close together kind of with the intention of using them like microgreens and just kind of seeing what would happen and as you can see they're really really small um, some of them are starting to get really long stems these however were sown 
they were actually sewn close together but I thinned several of them out and the more space that they have the larger that they're able to get without competition like back here you can see these are kind of close together and you see lots of little little plants so you definitely want to move your seedlings into their own space really as soon as they're strong enough to be moved so that they'll grow faster and become stronger you'll get your fruit sooner and that's the point of all this anyways I do want to clarify like I will not sow anything else as thick as I did tomatoes like my peppers I will not sow that thickly because I've had so much success in sowing tomatoes close together and separating them they're so forgiving because you can plant them so deep when I start my peppers they won't be nearly as thick that way I just don't want anybody to see me sowing things that thickly and then turn around and do everything that way some people may have success with that if so be sure to leave comments down below. I love to hear how different people do things. I think that's really beneficial to the community, but I did want to clarify that because I never want to mislead anybody into uh, mimicking something that I do without the full understanding of why I do it. So thank you guys. I bless you. Until next time.